If your name is Mark, this one's for you. Hi, Mark. Thanks for listening to JJ Meets World. I know there's a lot of other people listening to this right now, but I wanted to call you out because you're so handsome. You've really got that smoky kind of feel to you. And you'll understand what that means as you enjoy this episode of JJ Meets World when I break down a pretty epic Friday in my life. Sit back, relax, and Mark, hey, treat yourself to something nice today. And by the way, if you'd like to help support our podcast, visit JJMeetsWorld.com where you can donate to our Patreon, pick up some killer swag at our merch shop, or click the link to Apple Podcast and give us a five-star review. One, two, three, four. J.J. Gordon, sort of like that Indiana Jones in that he's always snipping out his next adventure. Yes, he is. He's always interviewing guests so he can have them on his show and they can talk about pop culture, arts, and leisure. J.J. has his flag unfurled and he likes his french fries curled and he's fun and then he twirls as he goes to meet the world. He will march into the rain even if his ankle sprain. Take a peek inside his brain. This podcast is called J.J. Meets World. I want to walk you through my weekend real quick and just let you know what's happened up to the point of where we're meeting here today. Okay. Yeah. On Friday, I go to work and I work on Friday and I have a good day. Works great. I get a bunch of stuff accomplished after I'm done working. I cut some ads. I found just the right bed music. I cut an ad for, um, Fargo Measure 3, they want you to vote yes, the Firefighters Union does, and then I'm the guy I who is like the chairman of it, I used to work with at Take Two back in the day. Mm-hmm. I mean, e- Eric is awesome. He should be a fireman. He's built like a sequoia tree, <laughs> right? Like, I imagine him carrying an entire family out in his arms from a burning building. So, uh, that it's always kind of fun when your past meets your present, a little bit like that. But, after work... I had made plans to get both my flu shot and my COVID booster. Okay. So double double fisting. It. Double, yep, exactly. And I told him same shoulder. Same shoulder. <laughs> if you can hit one. the same port, the same little hole, yeah. double just, bullseye. Just one stick and Ex- that's it. Extra points. So can I you just, put two needles in at once. I was saying I actually wonder like why can't you just put them both in the same like needle or like, you know, the same Mix like little, like, yeah, why <laughs> can't, why can't you just a cocktail? Yeah, I don't know. You know, why can't you just give it all to me at once? I talked to some guys who, when I was on the honor flight, who talked about when you went into Vietnam, you got 11 shots in your ass Oof. at like at basic. And it was not like, all right, boys. And this is the old fashioned, like glass, you know, and so they talked about one particular shot that they called the fire starter because essentially your ass would get all red and like inflamed and you couldn't sit on it. I'm guessing these are for to inoculate you against diseases. Correct. Right. And, and we need like, to give you a big hot ass yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just for a day. So I go to my pharmacy of choice and something's odd when I go to the pharmacy. I, I'm like, hey, I'd like to get my flu shot and my covid booster. And they're like, OK, that sounds great. And I'm like, man, this person who took my like digits is very attractive. And then all of a sudden I look at like another consultation that's taking place. I'm like, and that pharmacist is really attractive. And then I peek because now I'm like, okay, did I just happen to get like the two hotties? No, everyone at this pharmacy, both male and female are extremely attractive. And in my mind, I'm like, is Pfizer testing some kind of sexy (laughs) pill? And they're taking the sexy pills here. Now I start to get self-conscious because I am with my wife at the time. And like, so, and of course, you know, like I wouldn't flirt, you know, in front of her. Like that's just not going to happen. You her to leave. But at one point. <laughs> Go look at pet food. I, I lean over and I was like, hey, is it just me or are these pharmacists really attractive? And uh, Jill's like, well, I guess I hadn't noticed. And I'm like, you're a liar. I know you are. I saw you looking at that tall, dark and handsome over there counting out metformin. Uh And so then the woman who gives us our actual shots, she's super attractive. And she's also dressed like she's going to a gala. And it's it's like 430 in the afternoon on Friday. So maybe she's going directly to some kind of an event. Mm. But honestly, she was dressed like she was about to walk out the door and go to, you know, like plays in the symphony or something. Oh, God, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But it wasn't. Okay, I'm a harpist. (laughs) 
at night. She's like, that's why I'm so good at the shots. Phlebotomist uh-huh. by day. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of taken aback by, you know, the pharmacy of sexiness here. And it makes me a little nervous because, you know, I got to. I'm wearing a zip up like you know thin sweater and so I'm like I gotta take this off and roll my sleeve up and so like I'm trying to like you know <laughs> butch up a little uh, yeah bit. <laughs> I'm trying to like you know like oh uh, look at these muscles and then she's like she's like could you relax your arm and I was like oh yeah <laughs> yeah it's all, it's all good <laughs> and then I you realize were, you were flexing for yeah the, for the to check out this python uh-huh. <laughs> and to make matters worse right now I'm like. I want to impress her by my manliness, so I can't make any kind of like flinch or my eyes can't go wide. <laughs> I can't look at the suckers and being like, at least daddy gets a treat. I have to be as manly. And so she goes like, okay. And then she does the first one. <sighs> and if I could go back in time, <laughs> I went, didn't even feel it. And I don't know why I said that. Didn't even feel it. Didn't even feel it. <laughs> and uh, she's like, she's like, oh. And so she puts the Band-Aid on, and then she does, like, the second one. And, uh, boy, I felt, like, I swear to God, she was wiggling it mm. when it was in there. Yeah. Because I really felt it. And she's, she's like, yeah, tough guy. Uh, right, exactly. One. She's like, there you go. Enjoy this, you non-art supporting bastard. <laughs> not knowing that I am the lead cellist for the FM Symphony Orchestra. So... I have this experience. Now, the reason I did it on Friday was the off chance that I don't feel well. I've got all day Saturday to bounce back, right? right. So uh, that night, we had made plans to go up to Argusville, North Dakota, to our friend's house and go to a bonfire. Now, we get up there, and they're harvesting a uh, like a cornfield right next to it. So, like, the you know, chaff, you know when I say the word chaff? Yeah. That's, like, filling e- the air, yeah. like, right? And like, it's I almost mean, like a fine dust. It is, right? Yeah. And, like, I am maybe 20 feet away from, like, where this combine is, like, while they're working. And so, we decided, well, I'll hang out in the garage instead. So, we're in the garage, and there's a bunch of dogs, and some of our friends bring their kids, and... Our friend Davey has a kid who's cooler than the other kids. Mavis has an amazing imagination. She's super funny. She did this move where there was a bowl of candy on a table, right? And so Mavis would go up and stand on one side of the table and look an adult in the eyes. And she would go like, hello, my name is Mavis. What's your name? But what she's doing is while she's making eye contact, she's (laughs) putting both hands into the candy dish and taking as much as she can and then pulling them out. But she thinks that because she's making eye contact, there's no way they could see that she's taking handfuls of candy. Yeah, she's doing it nice and slow because it's like a T-Rex. Right. They They could sense motion. They were the fruity version of like... Tootsie Rolls, Ooh. right? Oh, oh, I don't like those. Oh God, the fruit punch is so good. Man, so I like good. I like fruit candies, but those I've never really gotten into. I love the waxy texture. So, throughout the whole evening, which I had a wonderful time, at one point Mavis brings a bowl over, and she gives it to me, and she's unwrapped like nine of these things, and she goes, "It's for the winter." <laughs> and she gives it to another, and there's a couple other wiener kids there, and they're like. They're, they're, you know, hanging on their mom's jeans the whole they're time. They're just not interesting. They're like, boring. Yeah, they're just like, ooh, they're like all afraid. And Mavis is like, she's like, let's pretend like we're on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like, I'm amazed. And then it, it, when you were a kid, did you ever end up at a, a like an adult shindig and you're like one of the only kids there and there's no toys yeah there's no oh, television yeah. there's nothing for you other than to like amuse yourself that was never a problem for me i right. was i was always even now i can just go sit in a corner without a device I, I can i can sit on an airplane without a device um mavis did just that and i was thinking like oh this poor girl by the end of it like she's gonna be so bored she's gonna want to go home and so jill rode rode home with the brunsvolds and Mavis is like, why do we have to leave? I was having so much fun. <laughs> and I was like, that's awesome. And then apparently she like just passed out in the car. Thank God, because she had eaten so much sugar. 
so much sugar. It was just insane. So she sounds like she's really taken after her dad on some. She level. really has, yeah, v- yeah. very much so. Yeah. Um, so my big <coughs> takeaway from the bonfire night that didn't end up being a bonfire because also we're under an extreme fire warning because it's so dry. Oh, and the wind is so intense. Yeah, that like if something were to catch a blaze, like we could see a massive prairie fire around mm-hmm. here, massive. So, um, so there's no fire, but. They live way out in the country. You have kind of a Smokey the Bear vibe to you. Has anyone, ever, much. Has anyone ever told that to We you? were talking about how much of a smoke show Smokey is. Right. Like, Smokey's got that big dad energy, mm-hmm. you know? Like, I bet there's a lot of women who would like to, like... It's like he's not conventional, but there's something about him. Right. Like, he's going to walk up to you drinking a bush light. Yeah. You know, and be like, the, be like the hey, fact, the are, fact that you isn't, don't, your, isn't your sister in cheerleading? The fact that you're not right now walking around shirtless with a ranger hat on. Is a travesty. Why did they put him in pants but well, no shirt? Like that's the question. Because right? that's where the genitals are. Yeah, but you don't see a bear's genitals. They don't just hang out. I mean, you haven't. But yeah, he's wearing pants. That's why you don't see him. Hold on. Could you see like if a? I've seen bears that rear up, but I feel like I get the sense though that he's more of a bear human hybrid, like a lab uh-huh. experiment. Like I think if you put him in the woods and full bears saw him, they would attack. They would attack him. He wouldn't be able to communicate with them. If anything, he might be a human that they did with Ninja Turtles, where the, the 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 most recent animal you touched is what you're going to mutate into. Maybe he was a park ranger who got mauled oh. by a bear, and then to save his life, they put him some mutagen, and he turned into no, Smokey I, the Bear. I think it's more than that. I think that he, he was a forest ranger who set a forest fire, Oh, and a bear shaman <laughs> from the bear clan put a curse on him. Yes. By the way. Yes. Just, just Googling bare genitals. Well, I mean. Okay, but hold on here. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Here's the thing. I wish here's that a, could be the podcast title. Here's what you need to know. The The first thing that comes up is a little block, you know, of images, right? Of images. And most of them are scientific, you know, pieces. But the first thing that comes up is from Shutterstock. A website known for its, you know, large amount of imagery that you can buy and then use. 25 bear penis royalty free images. 25 bear penis royalty free images. Well, in case you need to make a slideshow. 25. Like, there's a category? Are they all the same bear? That's a good question. Are they Let different me, kinds? They might be different species of bear. Although I didn't realize there were 25 species of bear. Oh my God. There's, some of them are cookies of what they would assume. I mean, some of them what? are, are cave drawings. That's kind of. Fascinating that we only know so much about bear genitalia that we have to make some assumptions. There's also, you know, like when like a mosaic when you use smaller images to make a big one. There's a <laughs> there's a picture of a bear that's only made with like the male sign, you know, the circle with an arrow coming out of it, making a bear. <laughs> These are not all bear penises. There are some, but not all. And the one, like the one that I would say is like the most showing of a of a bear dong proves that like unless yeah unless it became human hangout genitalia you know what everyone who's listening if just so you can see this because i can't put it on the thumbnail but why don't you just go to google right now yeah and i want you to type in bear penis no bear genitalia oh bear genitalia yeah <laughs> you know what there's a if you do this you'll probably get better search results bear genitalia then the plus sign and then penis oh and yeah. then enter that and uh you know, uh, post on Facebook the results you get. We'll see what everyone NSFW finds. guys. Even even if you're a park ranger, I still think you might end up getting fired. For and that that, that means not sorry for what you're about to see. Right. Yes. So let's. Yeah. Con- that's 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 you being unapologetic to the world of listen. This is nature. So and I this is NSFW. I you know. Remember that I'm not the one technically who brought up bear penises like this stems from tucker saying you know smoky the bear and i have I, the bear energy but this you asked the, why he would wear pants and right why would anyone wear but pants I, to cover I, their never would have, I never would have gotten there if you hadn't brought up smoky but here's the, I this did is not the reason hold a gun to your head and Be, say pick up your phone and google because bear I genitals don't, i don't want people to think that we pre pre-planned this podcast to involve this much you know, penis chat, but the next part of my story also involves a penis. So I need you to be ready for that. So we're, 
But this is unplanned. This is organic, as we say in the business. <laughs> as the night progresses, I brought a little cooler that had all my Diet Cokes in it. Wait, are we still at the bonfire? We're still at the bonfire. Okay, we're back at the bonfire. Back at the bonfire. Because Mavis the, the, had The left. non-bonfire bonfire. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, is Davy's kid and bare penises in the same podcast? So it's not. Well, okay, it's it's my penis. It's not, but like it's not. It's not. <laughs> it has nothing to do. Nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with where you're coming from on that. So let's not draw these allusions to each other. These have nothing. The the, the children had long since left. Long since left the event. And it was it was my part of the night to go to the bathroom. And I like I was like I was ready to go to the bathroom. We are going to head home. I was getting a ride home with a friend. And so I walked behind the barn that we were at. We're in like there are no neighbors. It is farmland all around us. So you you know that kind of darkness that you get in the middle of the country. Right. No so, light pollution. No well, it's or funny. very little light I could pollution. see I could see Fargo's light pollution in the distance. <laughs> Boy, we make a lot of light pollution yeah, in Fargo. Yeah. So I go around to the backside of the barn, which is where all the guys have been peeing, and one ambitious girl. And so I go back there and the only light, the only light that you're gonna see is coming out of a uh, like a window that's at the back of the barn that's the light from inside. Mm. So I am indirect indirect. I am really good at peeing outside. I've been training for it my whole life. When we had a lake cabin back in the day, like we'd go there when it was like, like we'd winterize all the pipes. So you'd have to pee outside. I've always said that about you. Yeah. My neighbors, when I was a little kid called me the wizard because I would come outside and pee in an evergreen bush, (laughs) like where like you drop your whole pants all the way down to your (laughs) ankles and they'd be like, oh, that Gordon kid's peeing on a bush again. (laughs) Or, or an elderly farmer does that too, for some fucking reason. Yeah. Every time I walk into the bathroom at Menards, Uh that shit's going down. Yeah, they're, the dro- they're, they're dropping their trowel all the way. I saw a dropped, I'm not even kidding, two weeks ago, he had dropped trowel. He was trying to pick which urinal he wanted to go <laughs> use, but before he'd made his decision, he'd prepared himself oh my. to do it. Which did he end up choosing? The center one. Uh-huh. I had to go use a stall. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> he, wanted all, he wanted some breathing room. Uh, so... So I go back there and I'm peeing and there's a window that's slightly open, but it doesn't make it like I just hear the din from inside the the barn having the party. Right. And I start peeing and it's a good pee. Like it's an outdoor good pee. And like four drinks in peas. Yeah, Even like, if it's not like, alcohol. I've like, been drinking these Diet Coke pounders, and right. so like I've my bladder is full. Yeah, aspartame. Right? It's mostly aspartame that's yeah. out. I've also been eating a lot of jalapeno poppers, mm. like bacon wrapped, and so I feel like there's maybe a grease adds, aspect adds to it. Adds a little zip to it. Yeah. So I'm peeing and I hear a rustle in the like the forested area nearby. And I immediately am like, oh no. Cause I'm like, the last thing I want is for a mountain lion. To come out here, right? And that's what I've convinced myself it is. It's like some kind of a bobcat, mountain lion. It's good be it's horrific, right? And so I'm just about done peeing. Like now I'm rushing it. And all of a sudden, a creature attacks me from the back. And like it's like on my shoulders, and like I can feel it pounce on me. And I go, oh my God. And I pee all over myself. <laughs> Turns out one of their cats had yeah, been on the roof line and jumped down on me to get it. But I'm convinced myself that there's a bobcat coming from the other direction. So now I think I'm being hunted like velociraptors, right? So I get some pee on me and I'm like, God, this sucks. And I haven't said my goodbyes yet. And so I'm like, do I just Irish goodbye and like walk mm-hmm. out and like, I only have to let one person know the person who's giving me a ride home. I'm like, Hey, listen, I'm going to be in your car in piss pants, <laughs> but I just want you to know that like, it's the cat's fault. It's, it's not the my cat. fault. Right. And then I'm like, okay, so I'm going to have to explain this whole situation and how many times I'm going to have to explain it. And I said, you know what? I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to draw attention to it. Yeah. Right. So I walk in, say my goodbyes. No one says a single thing to me. Go get in that car. No one says a single thing to me in the car. I get out, I go home. 
change my pants immediately. I'm like, well, it's not, they're not as pissy as I thought, but I'm like, but they've also had 45 minutes to dry at this point. So maybe they are a little pissier than they, they should, they should have been. Were you in jeans? No. Oh, you were in khakis. Yeah. Oh shoot. So they really show it. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Yeah. And like I had, uh, like I had to zip up real thin, like sweatshirt. And so I did think about maybe I should take it off and tie it around my waist. <laughs> like you had an accident at like camp. Like I had an accident at camp and I want to hide my shame, but I decided not to do that. Now you might be thinking, JJ, this is amazing. Your day must be done. Nope, it's not. So Jill had gotten home before me and I said, hey, I really love some pizza tonight. She goes, that's a great idea. Let's order a late night pizza. We'll watch a movie. You know, we'll just, we'll enjoy being alone together for a little bit. So we order a pizza from a local pizza delivery service that still has their own delivery drivers. Good for them. Good for them. And we get a large pepperoni, extra cheese, deep dish French bread crust, some wings, large side of ranch. I am ready. It's delivered by somebody I know. And so I end up talking to them on the porch for what seems like much too long, right? They were describing their shift to me. I was describing, you know, like this. And here's You the- know you're culpable in those scenarios, right? Yeah. There are ways to get out of those conversations. I've never once seen you get out of a conversation. No. So I know exactly what you're talking about. But I about. mean, for that reason, I am positive that if you needed bone marrow and I that's needed bone true. marrow, I'd get bone marrow so much faster that's, than you would. That's true, but you know what? That's a fair trade. <laughs> that's a fair trade. <laughs> so, and here's the thing. I like the guy who is delivering the pizza. I always have a good time chatting with him, but for whatever reason, I was like, this just doesn't feel good right now, right? Like, this just doesn't feel like the right moment. So we bring it in, and I'm eating the wings, and they're delicious, and they're crispy on the outside, and they're fully done. Like, you can tell these were made with a little bit of love. And eat some pieces of pizza, and I watch a movie, and uh, I'm like, you know what? Today was a pretty good day. And it felt like a good day. So by the time we go to bed, everything's fine. But as I'm crawling into bed, I see, oh, I left the back light on. And the reason I know I left the back light on is where we let our dog out, which is on the far north side of the house. If you turn on the floodlight right there, it shines a light and that goes onto our shed. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be... The jerk who leaves the back light on in case like, sure. you know, it's a f- it, the light is offensive to other people like in their bedrooms or right. something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So I'm like, it's very kind of you. Very yeah. courteous. I was like, good okay. neighbor. So I walk downstairs in my robe and Tony Sopranoing it. Tony Sopranoing it. And I go to turn off this light and I've got to walk down the stairs across the house and take care of it. So I do that. And as soon as I turn off the light, it's like something happened. And all of a sudden I hear voices. And I was like, hmm, this is concerning. So In your backyard? Not in my backyard, but close enough where, like, you know, there's something. So I go and I take a peek out my front window. My neighbor's kids are having a high school party. Oh. And. Neighbors to the south? I shan't say. Because I don't know, maybe their parents listen to this. But if you went out of town recently for the weekend, guess what? Your kids <laughs> threw a shindig. <laughs> I threw a lot of parties when I was in high school, and none of my neighbor well, one of my neighbors was like a jerk, and he called it in, but it's all right, because karma really bit him in the ass. <laughs> so I was like, what am I going to do here? Um, you know, I'm just going to go to bed. Like, I'm, you know. Was it, was it creating enough of a disturbance you thought you wouldn't sleep? Well, these, no, no, not at all. But these kids are so dumb. They're like, you don't, when you go to a high school party, you quietly shut your doors when you park it on the street and then you keep your mouth shut until mm-hmm. you get to the get party inside, location. Yeah. yeah. And then you can be as loud as you want. But they were making a scene already, right? Amateurs. Yep. And Amateurs. Then I, and then I was like, what house is this? And so I just watched real quick, you know, because you want to see what house they're going to go into. And as I watched them go into the house, I saw a car pull up into my driveway, park between the sidewalk and the street, like on that part of the driveway, and then kids get out and then start walking away. Media phone call. And I was like, (laughs) 
I'm sure in their mind they're like, ah, before these old fuddy duddies get up, we'll be we'll be long gone. <laughs> yeah. We're going snowboarding tomorrow, or you know, whatever they think, whatever kids do. And I was not having it. And so I went out in my robe and I went, hey, hey, hey. And they didn't stop, right? And so I was like, I had to make that decision in my mind. I'm like, will I go and storm into this house as a full grown adult male who recently peed on himself and be like, who's got the Toyota Camry? Toyota Camry. And so luckily one of the kids stopped and came over and I was like, hey, you can't park. You can't park in in my driveway. And they're like, oh, we thought this was so-and-so's house. They're like, nope, it's not. You can't park in my driveway. What if I need to get out? And they're like, oh, well, we're, we're not going to be here very long. I'm like, you can't park in my driveway. Yep. That's just the statement, right? It's yep. done. And then I think that like watching their mentality, they're like, if I don't do what this crazy man says, he may call the cops and ruin the whole party and then we'll be to blame. And then I will never get a chance to kiss Chrissy Burglar like on the lips, right? <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> So they come, they come, and as they're moving their car, and I watch with my arms crossed in my driveway as they pull the car out and repark it. Another car parks right in front of my house. Now, here's the thing, interesting thing. My side of the street, right in front of my house, is a no parking zone because it's a, uh, it's like a bike lane. And so this kid parks, and I was like, "Hey, you, uh, you can't park here. There's no parking on the side of the street." And they said, "Screw you." Only they didn't use the word screw. And I was like, oh. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yep. And so I wrote down the license plate number, and I'm going to ask one of my police friends to run it. And I'm going to tell their, like, (laughs) and the thing is, like, I thought, you know, I could call the cops and they could come and ticket this car, but then clearly it's going to bust up that party. And I didn't, I don't want to do that. Like, that's not my MO, right? That's not fun at all. And so... Later that day, I was like, what am I doing? I'm not going to do anything. I'm like, and you know what? This kid's dumb, and maybe they'll get smarter later on, but they're just dumb right now. That's going to wrap it up for today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to help us continue to produce new episodes each week, visit JJMeetsWorld.com, where you can donate to our Patreon, pick up some swag at the merch shop, or follow our link to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all the sites the cool kids are using these days. JJ Meets World is produced every week by Tucker Lucas. You can find out more about Tucker's work by visiting moonbasemaria.com. If you want to get in touch with your host with the most, check out linebenders.com where you can find direct contact info for JJ or booking information. Uh, We recently found out that... um that Mark has gone to jail. Turns out he's been embezzling, so no longer will I be dedicating anything to Mark. 